For the second time. Oh, man. What's this show called? <laughs> Geek Squawk. Yeah, that's what it's called. Geek Squawk. And who are you? I'm Noah Jaggers. Oh, that's right. And I'm... Hmm. Oh, man. I can't... I can't seem to remember anything after that dude wiped my memory. See, I, see, I had a joke set up the whole time. I told you. Okay, I, I probably should have told you him beforehand, but you know who we are. We, you know, it's we're here to talk about Incredibles two. Finally, finally, <laughs> we figured we'd let a little time pass. People seen it, so that way we could talk about you know all the spoilery goodness that's in it. Because oh, there's yes. not much, there's not much we can say that's spoiler free, really. Well, yeah, but still, we've been waiting 14 years, and it was not disappointing. No, not at all. I love the way this picks up, literally where the last one left off. Quite literally. Yep. Right the second the first one ended, and I, you could, someone should superimpose the two movies together. They really should. That'd be awesome if they did. I would totally watch it. Me too. In fact, someone did that with uh, Rogue One and New Hope. Because that one ends right where A New Hope begins. Yeah, but un unlike with the two Incredibles movies, um, the animation, like you'll, it'll be obvious the drop in quality. That is very true, because Star Wars was made in the 70s. Anyway, um, so, yeah, it picks up right where the first one left off with the Underminer, who I honestly thought was going to be the main bad guy here. Yeah, but he wasn't, which is really disappointing. It really is. I hope he, I hope he, like, there's no, there's no confirmation of a third one yet, but if there is going to be one, I'd like to see him and or Bomb Voyage come back. Yeah, same. Just... Behold the Underminer! John Ratzenberger! Yeah, <laughs> um, so, yeah, they the family together uh, stops Underminer at the kind of a last second situation. But yeah. there's there's kind of some damage that they kind of get blamed for. Yeah, and there's also this thing about Violet being so pissed about, I think, watching Jack Jack that she throws her mask on the ground and who walks up? All right, Tony. So what happens? Memory wipe. With Rick, but the prop, but not a pro. It's not a problem, but the guy who did Rick's voice in the first movie died. Yeah. So they got a new guy, and that kind of took me out of it. Like eh. he didn't exactly sound the same. He didn't give off that same energy. Eh. I don't know. I I never knew that guy's name until this movie. So. And also, we got Frozone back, who was one of my favorite characters in that movie. And he's still played by Samuel L. Jackson. Which is good, because nobody can replace Samuel L. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, his banter with his wife in this one was kind of lacking. And quick. Yeah. Where you going ASAP? You gonna be back ASAP! At least he has a super suit. Mm -hmm. And so basically, the the, the uh, supers are still illegal. And because, because a rich of, guy's like, you know what? That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. This rich, this rich dude whose name I already forgot. I can't remember dude, but it's something really white trashy. And he's played by the guy who plays uh, Saul on uh, Breaking Bad. Which I had never seen, so I would not have made that connection. Well, I didn't. He's, I didn't. I'd never seen it either. I just know it's the same dude, but. Um, I just said that and for the sake of whoever's watching. And he's the main face, the PR guy. Yeah. While his sister is more the technological type. Yeah. And she kind of looks like if J-Lo had a bad day. I was thinking more she looks like that one goth chick from um, Beetlejuice. But like... With shorter hair. And anorexic. Yeah. Uh, 
So basically what the rich dude wants is to help make supers non-illegal and welcomed into society. So he invites Frozone, Mr. and Mrs. Incredible to, to his house, you know, talk it over. And, you know, Mr. Incredible's like, oh, yeah, finally, I get back in the action. A new. A new. And <laughs> it, it the girl who gets back in the action with a really sw- slick suit. Yes, and the suit, I mean, yes, she does say it's kind of dark and brooding, but it kind of looks cool. I like it. Yeah. And I love the fact that Brad Bird is, like, the biggest, like, feminist. That he he pushes forward the whole female superhero thing, which I think is amazing. I'm glad that, yep. like, it, Elastigirl was more or less the forefront of the superhero-ness in this movie. Yeah, and she did a damn good job. Yeah. Stopping that train, like, Toby Maguire would be put to shame. Yeah, even like even Tom Holland, who held together a boat, would be like, "Whoa, damn, that was cool." <laughs> and while she's off doing super stuff, Daddy has to stay home with the kids, which he is not so super at. Not at first, especially because somebody's developing powers, like a million all at once. I think it's like what did he say, like fourteen, seventeen? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, what is it? Like, laser vision? He can combust? He can turn into a monster? He can phase through walls? He can. He has like, this weird um, elastic, elasticity kind of ability. Yeah, he can go into different dimensions. He, he, he's he got, like, lightning powers. <laughs> he can morph into other people. He can turn, like, really big and fat. Yeah, it's really crazy. And so... <laughs> and so, uh, in order to try to keep him in check... Uh, Mr. Incredible calls my one of my other favorite characters, Edna. Edna, and she's like, I don't want to, I, I don't babysit, darling. But, but then, then she, what is... but then she sees him having powers, and then she's immediately like, Oh yes, yes. you know, you go sleep, you go sleep. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, God, the cutest thing, like when Bob goes back to get him. He's walking and just acting kind of like Edna. <laughs> yeah. I love when she put him up to the thing and goes, da, da, da. <laughs> it was so cute. He was just really cute in this movie. And then Mr. Incredible's like, what do I owe you? Like, oh, standard outfit fee. But for this babysitting, this one, I do for free. <laughs> and by the way, Edna also voiced by uh, Brad Bird once again. Yay! Yay! I love the idea of, like, Auntie Edna. Yeah, Auntie Edna? I don't know, it just sounded cool. Um, <laughs> also, um, Violet found out about, uh, what's his name, wiping Tony's memory, and now he, she's Rip pissed wiped, it. And he, yeah, she got hella pissed. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, that also wiped... Every memory um, the, of her. And the yeah, the date they were gonna go on. Yeah, so she think she originally thought that he blew her off. She's going to school and he's like he literally doesn't know who she is. And she's like, What? What? Yeah, and then when she finds out, she tries to destroy her super suit, but It's indestructible. Yeah. Yeah, so she's mad. Yep. Very being mad. at being at home dad isn't so ho- so easy, Mr. Incredible. Especially when your son is having trouble with math that you can't understand. <laughs> Why would they... I love that. Why would they change math? Math is math! Yeah. Unfortunately, being someone who works in a school, I, I know that firsthand. They are yeah. changing shit. Yeah. I, 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 there was a bit of my life where I stayed with my granddad, and he went through the same thing. Like, ah, this wasn't math when I was your age. <laughs> um... And so, yeah, the the main villain here is somebody called the Screen Slaver, who uses television to enslave people's minds. Yeah. There's, like a, weird, there's like a weird epileptic pattern on the TV that if you look into it, you're, you're, you're hypnotized. Taken. Yep. And so, last week goes on this like epic journey to find out who the hell is the Screen Slaver. Yes, and she th- at first thinks that she got him.